Yes, sir. Will. Lee, do. Will he do. It's happening again. We're back. We promised. We're doing it. Mm-hmm. We're doing it again. And uh, we've got the, the, the benefit today of having a wide variety of topics to cover. Oh, good. Yeah, you. I don't even know if you know. We were getting stale. Yeah, I don't even know if you know. I mean, I got a story in here about a about a winter coat because you had the thing, mm. and then this thing showed up in my feed because it's listening to me, mm. and it heard me. I was talking about your uh, Patagonia thing. Yeah, and they heard me say that word. And they knew you had the big bucks for the coat, so my feed's got the coat. Yeah, this is how it works. Twenty nineteen. Always listening. 2019. So anyway, we're going to cover a lot of ground here, but we're going to kick it off with some Samsung news. Breaking news, rumors, report, making claims. You and I, of course, are are looking at an article on Mashable, but this was reported in a number of places. A cheaper foldable phone. I don't know if it's going to be called a fold of any kind. Samsung apparently working on a competitor more like the Motorola Razer 2019 folding phone, <clears throat> folding in the clamshell form factor. Mm. And the rumor, according to a report in the Korea Herald, which I'm listening, by the way. I'm listening. Are you? Yeah. Okay. If I get a report coming out of, uh, coming from a publication about a Korean company and the report is coming via the Korean Herald, I'm listening. Because <clears throat> you have standards. That's right. You know. Yes, right. Yeah. I know they're... You know all the heralds. I, I, I know... <laughs> yeah, first of all, if you're any kind of herald, never mind Korea. <clears throat> no, I'm Who saying... About it? I'm saying you got your feet on the ground. You're in Korea. Mm. You got the inside scoop. And then everybody else over here can go right about it. So, Korea Herald, hit me up if you got the insight in the future of what's going on. But this this sounds interesting. They've got a folding phone, and the the report states that it's going to have a price tag of eight hundred and forty five dollars. Mm. Which, wait a second, I thought these folding phones had to be like two grand <clears throat> or fifteen hundred. That's cheaper than most flagships right now. Will he do? Yeah. Which is great. I mean, that's a good insight from you as well. Yeah. I, you know, I Flagship thought. update 2019. Oh. $845 compared to $1,980 for the current Samsung Galaxy Fold. Mm-hmm. And the belief is that this thing in the clamshell form factor fold, which, by the way, they showed, up, showed off at a developer event when they were talking about One UI and how One UI is going to be able to fold. You see how I'm pointing here? Somebody put a pen on my desk, so now I'm pointing. Watch out. Yeah, yeah this might go flying. I don't know. I'm pointing because the I don't even know how the pen got here. Maybe I was busy doing business. Well, yeah. you see this? You see me over here? You're like, why are you writing on that beautiful table? Because I don't have anything. There's no paper here. Just doodling. We talked about a hole punch yesterday. Now I got a pen. We're just going to start to see old-fashioned stationery popping up on the table. Paper clips. You're a big stationery guy. Remember? Post-it notes. What were you telling me about the Japanese thing? <coughs> you, go, you go to the mall, you go look at the stationery. Oh, Muji? Yeah! Yeah, that's a great store. You're a big stationery oh, yeah. guy. If you, but then you also, if you go there, then you also pick up the T-shirts <laughs> and all the rest of it. Yeah, it has everything. Yeah. Oh. So that's a willy do. That's some willy do insight because you need a willy do update 2019 as well. So they showed off how One UI was going to react to being folded in various ways at that event. So the speculation already existed. This just provides a little more resolution, a little bit more detail, and of course this price point, which is so important. And one of the major things I think holding back the technology. Now you got this one coming in at 845, and you got the Escobar phone. 350. Mm. Yeah, what excuse do you have now? Yeah. Which one's it going to be for you, Will? Escobar phone <laughs> or 845 Samsung folding clamshell? Well, 
obviously the Escobar. Yeah, obviously. Because if he's watching this and you said otherwise, you're done. That's how it works. Never see me again. Yeah, that's how it works. You just don't show up tomorrow. And there's just a guy that looks sort of like you sitting there. And he says, I'm Willie Do, and he refuses to budge. He says, nothing changed. I just swam. And yeah. he looks like you. He sounds like you. But I realize something's a little bit off. Because yeah. his hat is not perfectly straight. It's like this. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> and it says Escobar on it. <laughs> Which I'm like, that's pretty obvious. If, if you're going to try and fool me, you know. Don't have the official Escobar hat from the, the website if you're trying yeah, to fool, fool me. That. By the way, I still got to order that for you. I apologize. It's going to take a little longer. Now, the other cool piece of, of this report talks about availability, suggesting that this $845 folding device would launch alongside the S11 perhaps in February. Now, that's, you see, I said February. You, all, you almost missed it. That's how you say it, right? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> they just put the R there, so might as well. I mean, everyone says February. February is, I mean, like, if you look <laughs> at it, but what are we talking about now? So S11 coming out very soon. That's exciting. We talked about the rumors with that device. It looks promising. We're yet to see the price exactly, though the speculation there is 1000 bucks. So now you have a folding clamshell that's less then the S11? What? Mm. That's weird. What are you trying to push out here? What should I do out here? 2019. <clears throat> you think it's trying to rival the Razer? Well, the Razer is still 1500 Right? The Razer yeah. is very close to the current Galaxy Fold-in price. They trying to, they trying to beat the Razer at that price. I, if anyone could do it, Samsung could do it. They could test it out, test the waters, see what's going on. And, and possibly drive demand into the space with that price. Because I think the cost is prohibitive for a lot of people when you're talking about 1500 to 2000 for a folding device. Or in the case of the Mate X, it was even beyond that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just aren't even going to try it out. Maybe Samsung, they want to get you in the ecosystem. Samsung wants to say, look, give us a chance here. 845, you're folding, you're flipping, you're flapping. Yeah. You can't go back after that and then the next one's double the price i don't know uh it could it could also possibly see uh maybe a spec difference i think it was reported with the motorola device you were looking at a sub flagship chip in there am i correct about that was that like a snapdragon 700 series, 700 series? i feel yeah. like it was it's quite possible we should verify we can't leave that on we can't put that on wax that's what they say if like if we were if you and I were rappers. I believe it's a 710 Snapdragon. If you and I were rappers, though, <laughs> you would yeah. say, we would say you can't put that on wax. <clears throat> you know what that means? No. Is that what people say? Yeah, pe rappers? yeah, Will. Specifically? I'm just trying to keep you in the loop. Okay. The universe is Drop a loop, some remember? Rap knowledge here. You got to put it on wax. Okay. All right, that's it. That's all we need to say. But sometimes you put wax. If you play hockey, you put wax on, on your tape. Yes. On the stick. You knew that one. So I've heard. Yes. You knew that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not that's not like vinyl at all. It's not like a record at all. But uh, that could, uh, your tape job could last a little longer if you had to wax. If you put the wax on the tape. Yes. It's going to resist moisture on the ice when you're playing hockey. Mm. So you might, but some people hate it. Some pro players, they say, I can't be putting wax on there. Yeah. Why? So, ah, people feel like the puck plays differently off it, the touch, the feel. It's like stickier. You're something. a guy like Kirk. You need to have the touch and the feel. Yeah. You got to feel it. Guy like Kirk out there, and you guys waving the your stick around. <laughs> he didn't understand yet. You put it on the ice, not up in the air. He's doing this with this, his, this Kirk stick. But he's getting there one day. Well, one day he's going to put it <laughs> in the Kirk back stick. of the net. Yeah, one day he's, he's going to put shouting out. Like one Kirk day. Stick. One day, he's going to put it in the back of the net. And you know who's going to hear about it? You're going to hear about it. If Kirk puts it in the back of the net on a Sunday night, you're going to be the first to know right here under the bright lights. All right. I'm going to explain it to you to how it all went down. Because the other game on this past Sunday, I said, Kirk, go for a skate. Uh. I said, go take the puck, go for a skate. Like mid-game. I'm saying, go for a skate. Go, go, go. He goes about two feet, and he's just like, that's it. I'm good. That's <laughs> enough. I said, it's not going to work like that. Anyway, 
we got to have the right specs if we're going to put it on wax. And so it's a Snapdragon 710. Willie do, ladies and gentlemen, 2019. It's all happening. It's all very exciting. And we get to see it alongside the S11. That's cool. Whether or not it launches or just gets announced at the same moment is going to give people more options when this all happens in a couple of months. There you have it. I don't know. At this point, for me, I'm probably a little more excited for the S11 than this folding thing, but that's because I don't know too much about it. It could be very exciting and interesting as well. But then again, we've got the Motorola product. Oh, can we share that news that the Motorola product is showing up here in studio? Yes. I just shared the I just shared the news. I didn't even ask you if it was cool or not. Yeah. We just put it on wax. There you go. Well, that's the thing. If you put it on wax, though, you can't go back and get it off wax. And we're putting everything on wax. <laughs> so all we can do is overwrite with new. If we, you see what I'm saying? It's we had to make the correction on wax in real time. Right. That's a whole different ball game right there. But anyway, is that next Friday? Uh, 13th. Wow, you're being really cryptic right now. No, no. I'm you feel like we to, can't talk about this? No, I'm trying to remember. I've talked to a lot of people. Hey, man! <laughs> Jeez! The, uh, the 13th on the Friday. Talk Friday to a lot of... Hey, talk, I'm trying to remember. I talked to a lot of people. I'm a busy guy here. I'm trying to Jeez. remember. I talked to a lot of people, Lou. <laughs> talked to Kirk. I talked to Jack. <laughs> talked to Otis sometimes. Lou. Lou just strolls in here. I'm Willie. Dude, I talk to a lot of people, Lou. Why are you asking me? Get off my back. I talk to a lot of people. <clears throat> next week, sometime next week. Friday the 13th. So in like two Ooh, weeks. Ooh, Moto Razor, Friday the 13th. I'm going to get, what do you get, Freddy Krueger to bring Jason. in here? Jason. Jason, is he Borges? the one working on Friday the 13th? I don't know who's working on Friday the 13th. <laughs> He's killing. Motorola's working on Friday yeah. the 13th. Tell you what. Okay, so we're going to have the Motorola one. We're going to compare it to that, and we'll see how it all goes. It's all, it's, you know, you know how it is, Will. Mm -hmm. Science fiction. No longer fiction. I didn't plan that. Qualcomm president. Priority number one is launching Apple's 5G iPhone as fast as possible. Mm. Big business. You know about it. You know about it, Will. They had beef. They squashed the beef. That's what you do in big business. Business doesn't care about your feelings. No. Mm -mm. They didn't have time for your emotions. What you trying to do? What you, you're a little upset. What you trying to do? Huh? Turn over on the pillow. <laughs> no! Steve, you got Tim Cook. Who's, I don't know who the Qualcomm dude is. President Cristiano Amon. Amen. Whatever. Yo, you don't hire, you don't hire your emotions to run your business. <clears throat> you hire your business to run your emotions. Uh, does that make any? No. no. Good. Good. It's not supposed to. They had huge beef. I'm talking billion dollar beef. You never saw billion dollar beef. That's like a, what is that, like an HBO series? Billion dollar beef. Oh, no, it's a documentary? What no, is it? it's an A5 Wagyu. <laughs> oh, all right. That would, Willie right? Do. Huh? Willie Do. You, you just uh, snuck that in there, and you did this after? You did the dive after? Yeah. Because it was that good. Yeah. It was animated. Billion dollar beef. He took it literal. I don't mind that either. It could be a documentary on the beef industry. Billion dollar <laughs> beef. What were we talking about? We're talking about a beef in the other way, that when you have a beef with someone, yeah. Qualcomm and Apple, they had their beef, and that's a real billion-dollar beef. Mm -hmm. That ain't no fun and games. Yeah. And that doesn't taste like, that ain't tasty. No. Well, for the lawyers, it's very tasty, actually. For the lawyers, it's a yes. lot of Wagyu, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of Wagyu for the lawyers. They sorted their stuff out in court recently, and they said, you know what? Let's sign a multi-year. Qualcomm, we realize you guys are gangsters. You guys are doing great stuff. 5G, radios. You guys are busy working over there. We're gonna, we tried it with Intel. They couldn't figure it out. 
they didn't have the volume. They sold their modem business. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't keep this going. We can't lose sleep over this. We got to shake hands. We got to just move on. We got to stop bickering over here. And they did. And now Apple has become a huge priority for Qualcomm because it's big time business for Qualcomm to get 5G out there in the world in a device that's recognizable and widely used. I mean, that's the iPhone. Mm -hmm. Certainly in, in some markets, that's the iPhone. And so... They got a new multi-year agreement that they can begin working on it. There's kind of a little bit of, uh, what are the the youngsters would say, a little bit of shade being thrown at the very end here. Hmm. The president of Qualcomm says, we're setting no expectations on front end, especially because we engaged it very late. So the idea that if 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 they never had the beef to begin with, oh, Apple be way ahead, way ahead on this one. But then I guess... We re-engaged probably later than both of us would like. This is his quote. And I think we've been working together to try to get as much as possible done and take as much as po- much possible advantage of what they've done before so that we can actually launch a phone on schedule with 5G. So that you just get everything, both realizing at a certain point we've wa- we have actually wasted a lot of time <coughs> in these negotiations. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's sometimes that happens with negotiations. It's a little leverage over here. It's a little this over there. And but the handshake is going to be a powerful one because obviously I believe this is going to be a huge push for 5G in general. Uh, this particular 5G iPhone is expected to come now in 2020, though it might not be every single model and it may not be the top end of Qualcomm's version because of them getting involved late. For example... Higher-end devices in Apple's lineup may be able to take advantage of uh, MM wave, is that millimeter wave, and sub-6 gigahertz 5G, and then there's a possibility the affordable devices will be limited to just the sub-6 gigahertz networks. It's not, a, it's not such a big deal in the immediate future because n- not all markets and urban areas are going to be affected the same way as far as availability of these technologies are concerned, but it's more just... It's more of a a kind of marketing thing going forward of what are the true capabilities of the phone? How long do you plan to hold on to the phone? Is this now the upgrade-worthy thing if you were holding off for the future-proof kind of purchase? If you hold on to these longer, you're probably going to want to have support for as many uh, potential connection types as possible. Uh, for these iPhones, do you think in 2020 that they're gonna make like um, like another line of like a 5G iPhone, or they're just gonna put it into like the Pro? Yeah, the Pro will just get it. Yeah, I think. Imagine, well, you got the iPhone, the Pro, and the Pro 5G. Yeah, I can't keep it together. Hmm. I might get emotional about that. I might be I might be the guy in the pillow soaking the pillow with the tears. I might have to call up President Qualcomm say we got to sort this out start a whole new beef yeah anyway it's good to see them working together as far as i'm concerned uh it, m- more people getting getting access to to newer technology it's a cool thing they shake hands of course you get to you got the other side the other people saying 5g is gonna end human life or whatever yeah <laughs> so <laughs> they're not happy about this yeah those people well, they're the ones that are upset now. So mm-hmm. somebody's always upset. That's the, that's the news of the day. Somebody's always upset. Motorola's new One Hyper has a pop-up camera, Android 10, and a $400 price tag. And it's basically a budget OnePlus 7 Pro. That's the headline according to Circuit Breaker, which is part of the Verge.com. They have coined this thing as a budget OnePlus 7 Pro. But what's weird about that is... Like, what wh- what is the price on the OnePlus 7 Pro right now since we're putting it on wax here in USD? It's not that much more than 400 is it? You can pick it up for 669 I feel like it's less right now, Will. No? Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Uh, the high-end 7 Pro is on sale for 550 for the holiday season. Does that sound better for you? 
Is that a possibility? We are in the holiday season. Things do get discounted. Maybe it's 550. Ah, look at that. Would you look at that, Will? There you go. Looky there, 549. So I guess, okay, budget in the sense that it's 150 bucks less than the OnePlus 7 Pro if you go the route of the new Motorola device. So that is significant. That's something. It's also, believe it or not, going to have a faster charge than the OnePlus device, which the OnePlus device already has a pretty good charge at 30 watts. The One Hyper 45-watt USB Type-C hypercharging. Okay, you have my attention. That's kind of cool. Pop-up camera, just like the 7 Pro, so you've got no notch. Bit more of a chin, if we're being honest. Weirdly, it looks like a rear fingerprint scanner, which I never minded those, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. <clears throat> I never had a huge problem with those. Yeah. They were quick, and there was none of the stuff on the screen. And yeah. Some people said you can't unlock when it's on the table. You can't unlock. you got to pick up. I said, all right, I'll pick up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind. It didn't bother me that much. And I liked the dedicated device because I always felt it a little bit more responsive than the in-display. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, I'll pick up. <clears throat> Other specifications, 6.5-inch display, 2340 by 1080, 90% screen-to-body ratio. I believe it's also got a 4,000 milliamp-hour battery. It is a 600-series Snapdragon processor. So people are going to be talking about that aspect. They're going to say, hey, man, for 150 more with the Promo 7 Pro, I get the 800-series chip in there. So there's an argument. I guess this all depends on cost sensitivity and whether or not you think that other chip is worth it because that looks to be the biggest difference between the two devices. I feel like the chin is not as big on the 7 Pro either. Also, a lot of people are, are fans of what OnePlus does with the software. Pretty snappy setup. So that's a tough one for me as far as a recommendation is concerned. But it's cool to see different devices playing in the space. And I guess the other differentiating aspect to mention is the even faster charge on the one hyper. So I'm paying attention, Will. And I can't tell you much beyond that, but I'm paying attention. What do you see? You see like, something. Look like it's got like uh, 64 megapixels. Oh, yeah. Camera. You want to talk about that camera setup? Oh, well, it's just labeled there. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all you know about it. Oh, it, it also has a headphone jack. How about that? And they say okay. 38 hours of continuous use on the battery. What do they say here about that camera? Let's see. 64 megapixel main camera, <laughs> which captures quad pixels, 16 megapixel stills, 8 megapixel ultra wide, and on the front is a 32 megapixel pop-up selfie. So I don't think you're going to see anything crazy coming out of that in terms of performance. Yeah. But it should be comparable. It will be probably in OnePlus wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, it's going to be tough on the chip side to make that decision with the $150 difference, assuming that OnePlus stays locked in at that 550 promo price for the 7 Pro. So we'll see what happens. Uh, YouTube has warned creators of subscriber count declines amid purge of closed accounts. So some people noticed that the channel, main channel Unbox Therapy lost 100,000 subscribers and they said, you're done! Get out of my face, Lou. You're done. Finally. I said that. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what you said. That's what you said. They were like, yes. I knew it. Hate that guy. And I was like, you know, good point. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. It's your call. You go. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, I hate to break it to you. That's not what this is about. In fact, a lot of people are going to see this. So here's the warning. If you didn't see it inside of your creator studio, I guess they tweeted it out, but a lot of people kind of miss this stuff. And some people go crazy with this stuff because they track it. And it actually does affect people that are on the cusp of certain features on the site. You have to hit kind of thresholds to get certain features on the site. And if you're close and you're working hard, and then all of a sudden it's a purge take place and you say, say to yourself, ah, it's right there. Yeah. Can't be taking these subscribers away from me. So my guys and girls, both. So people always get fired up about it, although it has become somewhat more routine, and it's good to see the communication about it so people just don't look at it and wonder, am I dead? 
uh, Google, I rely on things. Yeah. What are these lights? Yeah. Uh, Willie Do? What you think? Willie Do is free? This man ain't free. Kidding me? This guy, Escobar over here. <laughs> Rightfully so. It's Escobar over there. Rightfully so. Yeah, that's Pablo money. <clears throat> Cross, right across there. Yeah. This void in the middle here. Kirk's not happy about it. I have to burn money to heat up my family. You know? <laughs> You're run, running these lights, burning bills. Each one of them is yeah. combusting $100 bills yeah. in order to provide us with light. That's how this show works. Such a crazy story. Uh, so, yeah, so they give, they give the warning, which I think is good. Communication is good in this part. The, the new numbers, subscriber figures, are going to show up in YouTube Analytics December 3rd through 4th, those adjustments. Maybe we'll lose more than 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> Obviously, the bigger your channel, the more subscribers you're going to lose because uh, presumably the, there will be more closed accounts over time. Also, older YouTube channels will probably lose more subscribers as well. So if you see that happen to your favorite channel, just realize this is the cause and there's no greater cause for concern. Although... Some people speculate because you've always got the you've always got the conspiracy types in there and people wondering what's actually going on. What what constitutes a closed account? Did they tell us how long since you last logged in? Mm. Or or how long since you watched a particular subscription? What does it all mean? Mm. And so some creators that are nervous are asking their viewers to go and check their subscription status and resubscribe in order to ensure that they're not part of the purge, however it is that that operates. Mm -hmm. You see it every so often a person says, I didn't unsubscribe, unsubscribe, but then I was unsubscribed. You see it every so right, often. Right. It hasn't happened to me personally where I'm subscribed to a channel and that takes place, but you can check for yourself, see how it all works, but that at least in our case explains the minus 100,000 subscribers that took place. But moving us, pushing us a little further back will from 16 million which is going to be a cra it's a crazy milestone for unbox therapy i should just say shout out to everybody because i'm assuming anyone who's here watches unbox therapy and that's a crazy uh well that's a crazy thing i don't know yeah i, I, eh, I don't know crazy, eh? i mean how did this i don't know yeah. start how did it how do you you so, talking in front of it's a eh. okay you know i don't even think you want to actually I don't know that you actually want to try to untangle that because it's, yeah. it's a little wacky. It's a little wacky tobacco as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You, just, you just do what you got. You just do the thing that you, you know? Yeah. Your best vision of a path, you travel the path. You find the fork, you take the fork, you take the next. It's a whole thing. Well said. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was, was he with a fork? Robert Frost. He, for, Robert Frost was the fork. So I just quoted him word for word in case you were wondering. He said, you take the thing, you turn a left, you take the thing, you go down the back alley over there, and then you take the back roads. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then you're, you're, <laughs> and once you're on the dirt road, you're on the right one. Yeah. Yeah, that's you got what, 16 million subs. You have 16 million subscribers. That's the user manual for how to YouTube. You take the thing, you do the thing, you go behind the thing. YouTube 101. <laughs> no, you got You know what it is, Will? You know what it is? You got to be into it. You got to be into it. Yeah. It's it's real it could be real rugged if you're if you're not feeling it. And I know people, they look at it and they say, what do you mean? It's all coming together. You got all these. You should, you should, you should, you should be in love with it. You should want to do it. Yeah. And check yourself. But sometimes, but sometimes, man, it doesn't, that's not necessarily the case. You bounce around YouTube, you watch different channels, you wonder, you say, this guy's been doing this for few years is it still is the magic happening and yeah. sometimes you can't pinpoint why it is or isn't and it's not just success or viewers that necessarily uh 
constitutes the willingness to continue. So it's kind of it's kind of a bit cloudy and you can't really figure it out. But if you can protect your own motivation to do the thing, you're in a much healthier place. If you feel kind of cool about it, if you have fun with it like we do, you and I, we could just be talking like this. We could be doing this. We don't need those. We could be... This show doesn't have to happen right now the way that it's happening for us to be doing this. Yeah. And that's that's a flow. Yeah. That's a healthy flow. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. I Apologize agree. for the sentimentality. This is what you do now. You don't clap. So <laughs> Apologize for the sentimentality. I know you didn't sign up for that. No. Well, they didn't sign up for that, and you didn't sign up for that either. So I apologize. But I'm glad, though. I'm I glad. apologize. Nonetheless. This had to be said. Yeah. The new Canada Goose Toronto store doesn't have an inventory, but it does have a snowstorm. Oh, I got this one for you, Will. You're out there with the winter coats. You're doing the hiking, walking the dog with the snowboarding and the whole thing. Yeah. You're doing all those things. I'm listening. Well, actually, I was interested in this not because of the coat, the coats themselves, uh, uh, these Canada Goose coats are, they're so popular. You see them, everyone has these. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere. Mm-hmm. They're warm coats from Canada. Yep. Which is just down the street from us. Not Canada, but Toronto. Jeez, Will. <laughs> Holy, that's, this is no longer is, uh... safe. So rude. So yeah, the, the coat is kind of a meme, actually, but it has been incredibly successful tons of growth by the way in china china is the biggest growth market for the canada goose and do you tell me something well do you have to get a canada when you get a canada goose coat do you have to get all the fur and stuff or can you get one without the fur i don't have to have the fur if i get the coat okay I'm, i'm glad i can take the fur off i don't need the fur Oh, I'm not saying it from the fur. I didn't mean the fur. I'm not a. I'm not protesting anything. I meant I don't like the look of it, really. I prefer a more tactical kind of look to it. Do you like any of these, Will? By the way, are you are you in the market now, or you don't like any? Well, I've been trying to research like a good hiking jacket. So you're dabbling. Yes. You would dabble on a site like this. I do. You yeah. Do. You do. I went through this. You do dabble. Well, anyhow, well, the reason I brought it up is not because of the winter coat. It's because they've got this crazy new concept at Sherway Gardens down the street hmm. where it's not a store. There's no inventory. You don't buy a coat and leave with it. Instead, the real estate is used for an experience. And in this experience, you go through what is like a real world uh, kind of terrain with real snow inside the mall. No, you cannot show this. This NBC, CNBC, we're dead. <laughs> we're going to be taken down. Yeah, we're dead. You can't show this. <clears throat> but you can go watch the video if you want. I mean, or I can just basically explain it. You come into this environment within the mall and they have the gear outfitted on racks like you're about to go on an expedition. And you just pick whatever gear you want, put it on, whichever coat speaks to you, and you go to the next. It's almost like a haunted house, but instead it's outdoors vibes. Okay. You put the gear on in the, in the fitting section, and then you continue to march through these uh, simulated outdoor environments, including cold, below freezing, and real snow in the mall. Hmm. And you see how it works in the real environment. And so you're standing in there, you got the coat on, it's a thousand bucks. And you, you maybe you take it, you sit down or you, you just see how the exposure to, to the cold is with the coat on. You're like, man, I'm still warm because hmm. I got the goose down. Yeah. That's how it works. And what happens? Like you just. So you have the experience. Yeah, you then. go through a couple of different climate yeah. scenarios. And at the very end, you are met with a giant screen. And on the screen, you can place your order for the thing you just wore and tested out. You can say, yeah, I'll take it. And then 
It shows up at your house later that day. Mm. Whoa, what? Because who wants to carry a Canada goose around the mall? Yeah. You want to carry a Canada goose around the mall? That feels really good to say. I guess you could wear it. <laughs> you want to carry a Canada goose around a No, you can't wear it in a <laughs> Why mall. Not? You're, no. It's too hot? You're dead, man. You can't be in Sherway Gardens in a Canada goose. Yeah. You're going to get goosed. You're going to be dripping. Yeah. It's not a good look for you. Okay. So, like, <laughs> the. Uh oh. The selection here. Yes. Is it like uh is it like a regular store? So, you can just pick out So close this, close that one for a second and scroll down. There there you go. Yeah. It's still cool. You can see the features and stuff. I mean, wouldn't all of these coats be warm? Yeah, but in, in a sense, like you're just going through like these corridors. I know, but sometimes, Will, it's hard to visualize. Like you ordered the coat and returned the coat. Yeah. You're the perfect candidate. Sometimes it's hard to say, ah, this was going to be like when I'm outside. Yeah. In a store is really a weird place to test a winter coat. Mm -hmm. It's hot in there. You can't tell. No. I you, mean, you can just see the fit and stuff. But you can see the fit, but you can't tell. Not for a real world scenario. How warm it's going to be. Because I know for you, you want to be really warm. Eh. You don't I'm, want I'm well okay, okay fine okay. then it, then interesting maybe you don't maybe a coat you go outdoors it's below freezing in their environment and you say i'm actually too hot still yeah. i'm gonna take the next level down this is a really i like this in case you can't tell i like this idea. no it's a really cool experience and I so there's a, there's one area in a corridor where they have a, a crevasse that you're walking over and it's glass but it's cracking as you walk on it like snow and it's making a sound effect before you get to the rack to select your coat. Mm. And it's just people trying to come up with, it's companies trying to come up, with, come up with innovative ways to still get you into their premises. Because as you know, you just go online. Yeah. And and what what is the benefit nowadays of going into the physical store? Well, here's a benefit. You can try it on and try it in the elements, no commitment, and you don't have to return it and go through the whole hassle. Mm -hmm. I can't tell if you're on board with me here. I'm just trying to imagine. I guess I have to do it myself to you gotta see. It it's a cool idea. I, I like the innovative, you know, thought right, right. that puts into like the retail experience. Yeah, because increasingly retail, it's not. It's not it, looking good. It's not hot. No. It's and and people are going online and they're fine with it. They will look at a review or they look at a few photos and they order it up and, and that's the end of it. And the problem for Canada Goose there is they're selling a really premium product. I mean, I think their stuff starts at like a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. It's close. It's very premium product. So if they're going to make the case that you should have it, they they, they obviously want to show off that it actually, oh, no, it starts a little lower than that. But not those aren't the real ones. Parkas are a grand. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe you go try it out, Will. Maybe you head to Sherway Gardens in the weekend. It's kind of far, but yeah. maybe you do. And you try it out and you report back. It's a, it's a quick report. It's called The Journey. And you will have your coat, if you buy it at the end, on the smart display. You'll have it at your home that night or the next day if you purchase after 2 p.m. I think that's also a cool feeling, huh. that the journey is not over yet. You just, you decided you like the thing, and then but you're still kind of, maybe you get lunch at Sherway Gardens, and later on that evening, the coat shows up. It's kind of a cool, I don't know, a little surprise, even though it's mm -hmm. not a surprise. It's like, oh, yeah, I bought that thing. You elongate the purchase experience, which is a thing you kind of want to live in because it's it's fun. It's a, it's a romance. It's well, like you reserved the coat. And yeah, then it's, yeah, it's a couple hours later. It's a relationship you have with your things. Yeah. It's a it's a rom com <laughs> between you and a Canada goose. Sure. <laughs> so the cr the crevasse also from a, a technological perspective are made of OLED panels. So that's pretty cool. The entire thing that you're walking on is OLED panels, so they look really cool. There's an elements room with two curved walls, one 60 feet wide and one 30 feet wide, and it plays seasonal nature films shot in British Columbia from 4K laser projections in the ceiling. And then in the middle of the room is where the merchandise is. There's a gear room, which is a reinterpretation of a seed vault in Norway. I mean, it's just a cool experience. You know people are going to those escape rooms, Will? 
human beings are going to escape rooms. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I've done one. Yeah, you go in and you're escaping. <laughs> As you do, yes. As you would. It's kind of like that. I don't know. It's a fun thing. I'm a big fan of it. You can tell I'm a big fan of it. So good on them for uh, th thinking outside the box, so to speak. I don't think I'm going to buy one of these. These are too hot for me, I believe. I'm, I would roast, so I think it's too hot for me. But maybe I'll get one of the other ones, the the more toggled back, right? less parka things. And and so that could be cool. But it's a new take on retail in the age, in the internet age. This company is paying people. This is a new company. This is a new story. This company is paying people $1,830 to film them constantly. Cameras all over their uh, uh, habitat. Huh. Well, it's kind of interesting to call it a habitat because it does feel like a zoo, sort of, really. Yeah. When you think about it. Uh, every angle of the premises will be covered by the cameras except for the bathroom. Hmm. Which is, I mean, that's probably why you'd sign up, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Show off your moves in the bathroom. <laughs> it's like the filming only happens in the bathroom. That's right. That's right. You have a 360 Nowhere camera else. in the bathroom. Yeah. And people will pay big money for that. Well, because that's what people do. 2019. I don't know. Obviously, that's not what it is. They're, they they think, okay, here's the take on this. This is a, it's, it's kind of experimental right now. And the take is that in the future, no one has any jobs or a few people have jobs. And everyone else is on some kind of universal basic income because AI and robots are doing everything. And, mm. and, and Bezos has the world on clockwork. And it's just, mm. you know how that goes. Yep. That's how it goes. You go visit Amazon in Seattle, that song is playing on the PA all day. Yeah. And the people don't even hear it anymore. They just tune it out. Yeah, they used to hear it back in the day. Now they just hear screaming. 2002, they heard it. Yeah. Some people talk about when they used to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the time? Uh, Remember when that music used to play? The new guy who just showed up, he's like, it's still playing. Really? Can't you hear it? And the packages are flowing. Yeah, and you like, automatically hey, start packaging a box. Did you notice there's not as many of us around here anymore? Yeah. Timmy's gone. Did you notice Tim's a robot and he sounds like Alexa? What do you have for lunch today? I haven't seen you eating food in weeks. Guzzling electricity. Who are you, man? What are you, man? <laughs> Alexa. So yeah, in the future... Uh, you don't do anything. You sit around on your couch and all your needs are taken care of. You get the food pipe coming in and you watch Netflix and you watch this show. Mm. And that's how it goes. And the way you get paid is by generating data. Just like how currently your data, you got valuable data. Did you know that? Even you. Yeah, even you. Me? Yeah, they want to know what you're up to. What stores do you go to? Who are you emailing? What are you Googling? They want, they want all of it on you. Because once they get it on you, they got you for life. Yeah. Every move you make, they predict it. It's preemptive. They got Willie Do going to stores he never knew existed. All of a sudden, you're walking through a can of goose yeah. on a crevasse. Mm -hmm. That's how Google does it to you. Because how did it get in my feed? I don't know, because I said yesterday with the Patagonia. This is how it goes. Yeah, they're listening. So yeah. they're saying, hey, if they know everything about us anyways, let me get paid for my data. And so the premise here is you get paid $1,830 for your visual data of your daily behaviors inside of your premises because you have nowhere else to go because you don't have a job anyways. And this, apparently, the $1,830 is... 50% more than the same group would get through a subsistence level welfare payment. 50% more. Hmm. 
So they get to do this subsistence experiment while being filmed to see what the impact is on a human being who has nowhere to go and nothing to do. And what and and then what that data looks like in video form. Now, it's a, it's just a social experiment for the time being to find out if the unemployed would be willing to sell their privacy in exchange for money. And the project is called Exograph. Company, Japanese company, of course. Plasma Inc. Imagine you had a company like that. That name, Plasma Inc. It's incredible. And so they're going to be filming these people for one month. The payment is in exchange for one month worth of personal data. And they actually don't know what they're going to do with it yet. They are going to look for a market for it. Not publishing it online, YouTube ad revenue, but instead some company that believes they can turn that behavioral data into some uh, products or some kind of services or some kind of commercial thing. Somebody who wants consumer data. Right. Somebody who wants to know that you eat a grilled cheese sandwich every day at 2 a.m. And yes. someone's going to, like, analyze the video. Yes. It has to be an individual. They want to know when you take a, a deep breath. Mm. Ah, that's when he takes a deep breath. Yeah. Yeah, like an animal. Yeah. They want to analyze you like the animal you are. How do you feel about that? You going to uh, do that for 1830 a month? I mean, not now. What do you mean? But I can't. What do you mean not now? Hey man. <laughs> what do you mean not now? When you gonna, when you going to yeah, start? Yeah. When you going to start? I mean, when you know, oh, uh, oh, oh, college the Bezos. students or something. Oh, okay. or I thought you meant in the future. Someone in need. Dystopian future when Bezos has the thing we talked about earlier. Oh, but you, yeah. you mean if you were in a different point of your, of your, of your life, you, yeah. would, you would consider yeah. it. But the problem is if you get in that groove when you're a college, I mean, good luck getting out. Yeah. 1830 for, for, for laying on the couch, for, for taking a deep breath at yeah. 2 p.m. and eating a grilled cheese sandwich at 2 a.m., you take that 1830 forever. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. It's a hot topic, politically yeah. speaking. It seems yeah. to be that we all kind of imagine a future in which work is different. And at least we entertain the idea that this universal income is a possibility, whether you like it or not, no matter which side of it you're on. For me, it's a, bit, it's a scary concept because obviously people derive a lot of their well-being through their accomplishments. Yeah and progress and feeling fulfilled projects and tackling things yeah. and uh i don't know maybe maybe these people instead maybe they will tackle things maybe you stick the cameras on them they're whittling yeah it's like people are watching me i gotta do something and all of a sudden they're way more productive because they're at home they got the 1830 and they're whittling yeah are you allowed to have a side business i don't know i don't know how this all works can you get this subsistence stuff and have a side business probably to a certain point and if you earn too much money then yeah. You Would stop. you do this at a certain point in your life? I, that's, the like that's the scary that, part. If I'm if I'm uh, 20 years old yeah. and I know that's an option, that's the scary part. Mm -hmm. Somehow knowing that it's not an option. Now, people again, this is hotly debated. People will say, "Nah, man, you were gonna you were gonna find some ambition regardless." But I'm not so sure about it. I don't know. What I, if? Yeah, go on. I would be speculating to say that it would have had a negative impact on me because I, maybe I would have done it and got bored of it and been even more motivated than I would have otherwise right. been. But the scary side of that is that I don't and then the 20-year-old me becomes the permanent me. Hmm. I got one more topic. Apparently, we're using caffeine the wrong way. And this is where I feel like we could really all learn something from Willie Do. Well, there's many things we can learn from Willie Do, but this is, this one particularly is exactly what you do. And I'm reading this article and thinking, that's your tactic, that's your technique. What, what do I do? Just drink it ever so often? Exactly. The best way to use caffeine is every so often. And when you turn it into a habit, it loses almost all of its effects, which is what I feel because I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to it. As you know, as you might, the coffee cups are gone today, but I'm addicted to it. I have coffee every day. And apparently its ability to have, the, to have any kind of impact on you or effect on you 
is related to how much exposure you have to it. So even though I feel like I need it, once you're reliant on it, the effects of it are different or gone completely. In other words, the kind of, uh, you, when you're on coffee, you are like a super willy do. The last few times, I yeah. couldn't believe it. I feel it. I feel it. I know. And I couldn't believe it. When I looked at you, the words were flowing. It was, there was a sharpness to it. I was taken aback. Taken aback yeah. I was taken aback, but I, but I loved it. And the thing was, I, I was thinking to myself, the thing that you would be thinking is, Willie, do you should do this every day? Well, the answer is probably that you shouldn't. Probably you're doing it right. Only when you need it. When you're feeling a little messed up and you're feeling, I need a boost right now, that's when you should go for it. You should reach for it. Yeah. Well, it, I, I don't, I do caffeine, but it's just the amount of like tea. I drink tea. Right. Which is a lot lower than coffee. Right. Yeah, no, it is a caffeine intake thing. They've got an equation here on psychology today of uh, your, what your dependency actually is. This individual, now this this really scared me when I read this. To get the maximum potency out of caffeine, you should use a dose between 200 and 600 milligrams once per 14 days. <laughs> oh, that got Kirk's attention. He can't handle it. You see, that's how you know we're addicted because that concept sounds crazy that you get one coffee every 14 days for maximum efficiency. But even let's say at half max efficiency, maybe you have that dose uh, once a week. You save it for a day or you really need it and you get, and you all of a sudden get the maximum boost. It could be cool, could be, uh, could change a day, could change the outcome of a day if it can have that effect on you. Right. But guys like me and Kirk, Tell me, Kirk, does, does, does coffee have any effect on you anymore? Or, no, it's just that's the normal. The normal thing is just to keep having coffee, but apparently it doesn't work that way. Your tolerance goes way up, and it, it takes a long time to reset your tolerance. For me to get the effects, I would have to go on a break as well for an extended period, then start it back up. Do you think you'll, you know, have like a withdrawal? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I'll have a headache for sure tomorrow. Really? Oh, God, yeah. If I if I go up, I'm telling you, man, it's it's so easy. It's it's always been weird to me. Caffeine is obviously a drug, and it's on every corner, and they'll give you as much of it as you want. Now it's not the most dangerous of, but it is. It does affect your your well, affects your mood. It affects. It's subtle, but it affects you, and you can get as much of it as you want all day long. The availability of coffee is bananas, and the popularity of coffee is bananas. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to turn down the knob on coffee. I love it for so many reasons, Will. Yeah, the it's ritual, not, the smell. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. Hallelujah. Kirk knew I he felt that I wanted to go there, but he didn't think I would. Yeah. But I just it was I felt like I was one of those guys at the front of the the evangelical because because of the noise I made, so I just wanted to. You're Kanye. Yeah, I just it was Sunday service, so I yeah. just wanted to complete the thing. Yeah. But coffee, the flavor, the heat on a cold day, the smell of the beans in the grinder, the morning ritual, the dripping of the hot water through the grinds, mm -hmm. the first sip. I mean, it reaches your nose before it reaches your lips as you lift the mug towards yourself. Yeah. I think a few people are gonna have a coffee yeah. right now. I know. <laughs> I, I think a few. I think a few people are gonna have a coffee right now. So there's there's more to the story. I love the drink, and I think that's part of the addiction. Weirdly enough, is the whole package deal and not just the caffeine effect. But if you are looking for the caffeine effect without the crash, if you're looking for the maximum stimulating nootropic effect of caffeine, you have to minimize the ingestion. You gotta pull the willy do. We're gonna call it the willy do special. He trims back the caffeine most of the time, then he hits it with a bang every so often. He comes out here on a show and he absolutely crushes it. Today is not one of those days. It could have been a different show if we had had that willy do, but we just can't have that willy do every day. This is a message about life in general. You can't, you can't redline it. You gotta save up. You gotta have discipline. You gotta use it when you need it, only every so often. It's like the racing game. You get the booster, but you can't hold the booster in the racing game the whole time. 
You got to time it correctly towards the end of the race when you really need it most. Yes. And that's what you do. And so because of that, I'm going to let you actually do the outro for the show today. I know you have something prepared. So go ahead and tell the people. Give them the last word. Um, have a good day, everyone.